Hello, gang. We got Unane's Le Soul 17, or no, 27, if I'm reading the Roman numerals correctly, which is pear and pomegranate. I've been drinking Le Soul's for years. Haven't been drinking it that much lately because I'm just not into the super sour beers as much anymore. It's six and a half percent, just like all of them. It was canned. Ooh, I don't, there's no date on it. But, <clears throat> oh, it says batch 1 2019, so the first time they've made this. I think it's pretty fresh. It's been in the fridge the whole time. It's been at the store where I work. And pear and pomegranate. Sounds like a real interesting combo. The one thing is that I'm not sure if like their base beer for all of the Sewells is barrel aged because they advertise other sour beers as being barrel aged that they make. Not this one. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I have a feeling maybe it isn't. Let's just get to the drinking. Real interesting color. Kind of a hazy blush rosé look. So it's probably not a gigantic amount of pomegranate juice in it because pomegranate is like really intense staining red. It's kind of yeah pinkish, I guess. Not much of a head or anything. Yeah, my fridge is like super cold right now, so it's gonna be a little bit too cold probably. I'm smelling their house tartness, making my mouth water almost already. Yep, definitely a lactic stuff going on, but really, really fruity. Yeah, if you gave this to me and didn't tell me what fruits were in it, I, I don't know. Well, it smells more, mostly like strawberry to me, actually. Almost banana. It's probably the pear, because kind of sometimes pear at least the the chemical compound that we use for like pear flavoring can kind of be banana e too. I think it's isoamyl acetate. So like, I'm just thinking strawberry banana, which is one of my favorite flavor combos as a kid. So I really like that. It doesn't smell funky, it just smells <clears throat> like tart, you know, strawberry banana yogurt. Pretty good mouthfeel, and that puckering sour on the first sip, I'm sure it's gonna build up. And it finishes with this phenolic, almost smoky quality that I get from, <clears throat> you know, sour fruit beer sometimes. That's not off-putting. I guess it's off-putting if it be becomes like band-aid-y and, and you, you can really smell it, but I don't smell it. It's the smell is dominated by fruit. Mm, yeah, it smells really good. Mm. Yeah, it's not, there's no Brett Funk or anything happening. Maybe they probably do have some kind of Brett <clears throat> happening, but it's the way that they, the way they brew it or the strains they're using just aren't bringing out big barnyard weird flavors. But I can de definitely tell this is like a step beyond a kettle sour. Um, it actually reminds me of some of the Night Shift Visa series, which those are like my favorite beers from Night Shift right now. Because uh, they're really well-made mixed fermentation beers with fruit in them. This one is maybe a little bit more complex, stronger, it's six and a half percent. Um, definitely more expensive. But if you like a really fruity yogurt kind of tang, go for this one. Yeah, I'm surprised that the acidity's not bothering me too much. It is pretty sweet. Maybe it's more sweet than some of the other, uh, some of the other Lasools. And maybe these days they're making their Lasools more, more sweet, um, because that's the popular thing is to make super juicy beers one way or another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice. I'm kind of surprised how much I like it. I might even give this like a 4.25. And I guess now it's a little cheaper that it's come in two packs, but still not that cheap. The uh, Night Shift Everbyser series, those are coming in four packs, and those are about the same price or something. Maybe a little, mm, yeah, so it's a little expensive, but a little more interesting. So, recommended.